we are back to do another bookshelf scavenger hunt chooses my next read i had the best time doing this last time if you've watched it it was interesting i mean <laughs> i missed quite a lot of very clear things such as choose a book with a moon on the cover and this being in front of my face and not realizing <laughs> but still we are back to do another one of them i had such a good time last time i feel like it is a very fun way to choose the next book i'm going to read it makes me maybe pick a book that i wouldn't otherwise choose Essentially, if you haven't watched the last video that I did on this, I don't know who originally came up with this idea, but where I originally saw it was Riley Marie. I will link her channel down below like I did in the first one. I adore her anyway. <laughs> so if you want to go check out her channel, I would highly recommend. I believe it's 10 prompts, 10 different prompts. We pick a book and then that leads us to the next book and the next book and the next book and so on. And then we end up with one final book at the end, which I will then read with you guys in a little vlog at the end. So <laughs> I'm going to crack on because last time it did take me a good long while, mainly because of my own like failure to to comprehend things, um, such as a moon being in front of my face. <laughs> but I'm gonna crack on and we'll start with the first prompt and you will hopefully see what I mean as we get through it. So the first prompt is pick a book that you gave five stars and then find another book that you would recommend to people who liked that book. So I need to go find a five star book real quick and I will get back to you. If you have been a regular watcher of my channel, you will know my feelings towards Miss Elsie Silver. She is the love of my life. I love all of her books. I think she's phenomenal. So the first book that I'm gonna choose is Flawless by Elsie Silver. This is book one in the Chestnut Spring series. I gave this five stars, obviously. I adored this. I've given pretty much every book in this series five stars other than one, which is a pretty good track record, I think. But I love this. This is like a yeehaw, small town, romance. It's got some spice. It's phenomenal, this whole series. It's gorgeous. So if you enjoy Flawless by Elsie Silver, I'm gonna go ahead and recommend A Photo Finish by Elsie Silver. This is the Gold Rush Ranch series. I feel like this is lesser known and lesser loved for no reason other than maybe it's just not, I don't know, spoken about very much, but I adore this. And it's very much the same level as the Chestnut Springs series. I think they are both phenomenal. I gave this book five stars also, <laughs> and I would obviously highly recommend it because it's also by Elsie Silver and it is also like a small town yeehaw cowboy romance. This one follows, I believe it's Violet. Violet Eaton, and then I forget his name, it's something like Garrett or something like that. But they end up meeting online and they form a bit of relationship and then the relationship falls apart. End up meeting in real life. She doesn't know who he is, but he knows who she is kind of vibe. It's stunning, I love this. Violet Eaton is the sister of the Eaton brothers that are followed in this series. So I would highly recommend this one if you liked this book. The next prompt is count the number of letters in the title and then pick a random spot on your shelf and count to that number book. What I did last time was I just started at like the first book on my shelves, but I might just pick a random spot this time and then we'll count. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. We have 12 letters. So I'm gonna pick a random spot and we're gonna count to 12 and then that'll be the next book that we choose. I think I'm gonna choose here for no reason other than vibes. So we're gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Interesting, we have The Honey Don't List by Christina Lauren. I didn't love this book all that much. I don't think it was bad by any means, but I think I gave it like three stars maybe. So let's see, <laughs> let's see what the next prompt is. I'm intrigued. I think this one might be a little bit difficult. We have got, look at what is on the cover and then find another book with similar elements on the cover. We have not a whole lot on this cover other than hearts. Um, <laughs> so maybe I need to find another book that has a heart on the cover or maybe a book that's just like plain white and red. This might take me a minute. <laughs> This might take me a minute. I think I found one that vaguely matches. I'm gonna go with the So Not Meant To Be by Megan Quinn. Now, I don't know if you can see, we've got red. I think we've got a bit of white. Have we got white on this? Barely, but it's got hearts and it's red and it's white. It might be a stretch, but I feel like that's the best I'm gonna manage <laughs> with a cover that has like literally nothing on it. Um, I feel like I've done the best that I can. The next prompt that we have for this book is reverse the page number of the book and then find another book with a similar page count. So I think that we just go to the last page, see what the page count is. 458, why do I keep getting this? <laughs> this happened last time. So that reversed is 854. So we need to find a book that has around about 854 pages. I have something in my mind immediately actually that's come to my mind. Let's see, let's see if my, if my inkling is correct on this one. My inkling was correct. I'm gonna go with The Priory of the Orange Tree by Samantha Shannon. I feel like this is the obvious choice because obviously it's a brick and a half. Um, this has 824 pages, I believe. 
825. So this is the next book and we're gonna go to the next prompt. This says list some of the tropes of the book and then find another book that shares one or more of these tropes. I haven't read this book so I don't know. All I know is that it's high fantasy and it's got dragons. So maybe I need to find another book that has dragons in it? I feel like you're all gonna think I'm gonna choose Fourth Wing and that would be the obvious choice because obviously dragons but I did choose that in my last one so I'm gonna choose something a little bit different. Um, but it's just gonna be dragons because that's the only trope that I know <laughs> in this book because I've not read it. I'm gonna choose The Light and the Flame by Jennifer L. Trout. Now I am only like just over 100 pages into this but this very much features dragons. I think they call them like dragons. But it's the same vibe, it's the same vibe. I'm trying to show you like the little chapter headers, look. They have tiny little dragons all over them. This does have dragons, it's not like main, main to the plot and definitely not to the point of Fourth Wing. But this does have dragons in it. So that's what I'm gonna go with. <laughs> Bit of a strenuous link. But I'm gonna roll with it. This is gonna be the next book. The next prompt is find a book that has the same colour combination as the current book. So we have black, green, grey and yellow. Does that sound about right? We've not exactly got like bright colours or anything very obvious. So let's have a look. Have we got anything that's black, green, grey and yellow? I think I'm gonna go with The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. Now, <laughs> it's a little bit different but we do have black, green, we've got a little bit of grey in the title and we've got like the goldy yellow in the name at the bottom. It's, it's tenuous. It isn't, it isn't completely accurate. <laughs> But I'm gonna roll with it. I think that that's the best I'm gonna manage. I did look at a lot of my green books and my grey books and that's 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 the best we're getting, babes. So that's what we're going with. The next prompt is read the first sentence and then pick any word in that sentence and find a book with that word in the title or on the cover. So let's read the first sentence of this book. This is a five star book, by the way. I adore this book. Please read it if you haven't. The first sentence is film legend and 90s it girl Evelyn Hugo has just announced that she will auction off 12 of her most memorable gowns through Christie's to raise money for breast cancer research. Right, let me, let me reassess that. I'm trying to think of words that will give me things on covers. So film, girl, gown, money. I feel like we can, we can find a book that someone's wearing a gown or there's a girl wearing a gown, right? Hopefully that should be easy enough. I mean, we have a girl wearing a gown on this, but <laughs> let's find something different. I did choose this book in the last scavenger hunt, but we're gonna roll with it because we have a girl and we have a gown. We have Daughter of No Worlds by Carissa Broadbent. As you can see, we have a girl and she's wearing a gown. And I think that the gown is gorgeous. <laughs> so I'm gonna run with this one. This is gonna be the next book. I did really like this book, by the way. If you haven't read it, I would highly recommend. It's like a fantasy romance, like training. I need to read the next book in the series. I've only read this one, but I really did like it. So I would recommend this if you haven't. The next prompt is go to the acknowledgements and find a book written by an author with the same or similar name as the names listed. Right, I hope that there's a long list. Last time we did have a pretty good list, so I'm hoping. We've got Nathan, Stephen, Michael, Noah, Tom, Kate, Nick, I have Kate Stewart. I think I'm gonna go with Kate Stewart. That's the one that's jumping out to me and it's literally right in front of my face. So that was nice and easy. <laughs> so this is the next book that I'm gonna choose. This is Exodus by Kate Stewart. This is actually the second book in the Ravenhood series. I much preferred it to the first book. So maybe it's a good thing that I picked this one instead of the first one. The next prompt is look at the cover of the book and find a book with a similar looking cover. This is, I mean, <laughs> it's plain red. It's plain red. I think there's some feathers in the background of it, but it's plain red. Uh, I'm gonna find a red book hopefully with a white title, and then call it a day. <laughs> I'm going with A Court of Thorns and Roses by Sarah J Maas. Right, we've got a red cover, and she's got like feathers on her outfit. Does that make sense? Do you see, do you see, the, do you see the vision? Do you see what I was going for? It has a white title also. Are you seeing the vibe? Yeah. These are the OG covers, and you will never catch me getting rid of them. I have the OG covers in paperback and in hardback. Um, the only book that I don't have in the OG covers is A Court of Silver Flames because they didn't release it in the OG covers, and I much prefer these, so. <laughs> Good thing I still own this, because otherwise we might have struggled to find red and feathers and a white title. This is officially the last prompt, this is prompt number 10. So we have, add your birth month and day together, turn to that page and find a book with that word in the title. This is where I really struggled last time. This took me a good like 20 minutes to try and find. My birth month is March, which is the third, and my birthday is sixth, it's sixth of March. So that is nine, adding three and six together. Chapter nine is a new chapter, it says, the sun had set by the time I exited the forest, my knees shaking. Sun and forest? Does it have to be in the title or does it have to be on the cover? It says it has to be in the title. I might stretch it to also be on the cover because this might be really difficult again. Well, I'll have a book with the sun or the forest. The sun or a forest <laughs> on the cover, surely. I might have to stretch it to just be the cover. Let me, let me go have a peruse and I'll get back to you. I don't know if you can even see me <laughs> from down here, but the difficulty is it has to be a book that I've not read. I feel like I have a lot of books that could apply in general, but it has to be in my unread books because I want to read it with you guys. So we've got slim pickings really.
I can't believe how long that has taken me. It's been like 20 minutes. I've been sat on the floor looking at every single book and it's taken me far longer than it probably should have. But we've gotten there. It's not in the first sentence that it's the best that I could manage. At the moment, I only have 30 books on my physical TBR. And I would say about 10 of them I've already allocated to vlogs this week, this, oh my God, this month. So they weren't ones I could choose from. So I had about 20 books overall to choose from for this sentence. So I cheated the teeniest tiniest bit, although I don't really think it's cheating because I think it's a very difficult question. <laughs> but I read on to the next sentence and it says, the world was awash in hues of dark blue, interrupted only by shafts of buttery light escaping from the shuttered windows of our dilapidated cottage. I've chosen things we hide from the light. <laughs> Do you see my thought process there? I've got light, it's got light. I'm gonna go with it. Now this book is the second book in the Knockabout series. I did not like the first book in the slightest and so I have been anxious to read this book. I don't know if I'm gonna love it. I don't know if I'm gonna love it because I disliked the first book so much. I gave it one star. I think it's one of my least favourite books I've ever read. So I'm scared. But this is the next book in the Knockabout series. I believe this follows the brother of... Yeah, it does. It follows Nash, who is the brother of Knox, who is the love interest in the first book. Lena. I can't remember who that is. Is that the sister? I can't remember who Lena is, but either way, it's another romance book. It's gonna be an interesting one, I think. <laughs> but I'm glad I've gotten it because I did wanna read it at some point and I feel like this is gonna be a good one to read together because of how much I dislike the first one and how popular this series is. So hopefully you guys will have some thoughts and feelings to share with me about what you think about this book. But we have officially made it to the end of the scavenger hunt and this is the book that I'm now going to read with you for the rest of this video. It is like a good two weeks later <laughs> and I figured it was time to check in with you guys because I'm halfway through Things We Hide From The Light. I only started this last night. I haven't actually been reading it for two weeks but I filmed the actual like scavenger hunt bit like two weeks ago. I thought I was going to put it up sooner than I have but I've had a mad month in terms of books that I needed to read and this is an absolute brick of a book <laughs> for a romance. So it's taken me a minute to get the time to actually pick this up but I'm just over halfway through. I am 347 pages in which I think is like 60% maybe and I read the first book in this series what's called Things We Never Got Over. I read Things We Never Got Over sort of in the middle of the year and I absolutely hated it. I gave that book one star. If you had to ask me what my least favourite book of all time is probably that book. So <laughs> I already owned this book. I feel like I picked it up before I even read the first book which again silly billy maneuvers by me but I am enjoying this book. I never thought I would say that. I genuinely thought that I was going to despise this book because of how much I despised the first book. This is so much better. This is so much better. I prefer the characters which I feel like is automatically very very easy considering how much I hated the characters in the first book but the writing feels different to me. The writing feels a lot better. I don't know if that's just because we're reading from different people's points of view. This is a dual POV book so I don't know whether it's just because I prefer the characters that I'm preferring the writing style but this is so much better. This is sitting at like a 3.75 maybe even a four star which is so surprising to me. <laughs> in this one we are following Nash and Lena who Nash is the brother of Knox from the first book. He is the police chief. He had a bit of like a traumatic experience and he's kind of recovering from that. So there's a lot of talk on depression, mental health, panic attacks, that sort of thing. So if that's something you don't want to read about, maybe I would stay clear of this book. And then we follow Lena, who is like a low-key undercover investigator kind of thing. And she's in town to do her own investigating that kind of relates to the traumatic incident that Nash had. And then there's a romance. They like live next door, so it's kind of false proximity. It's very much like hate to love, dislike to love vibes. Kind of, it's not really a slow burn, but nothing has really happened between them in the first 60% like of a romantic nature. I just think it's really fun. And I'm reading it really quickly. Again, I only picked it up last night and I am over 300 pages in. Part of that is kind of inspired by the fact that this vlog is going up on Wednesday and it is currently Monday. So I would like to get it read. <laughs> relatively soon but I also do think that it lends itself to being read relatively quickly because it's fun it's good I'm actually enjoying this and I'm glad that I am because obviously I don't want to dislike a book but I was very much convinced that I wasn't gonna like this book so I'm very glad that I'm enjoying it and I think that I know I'm an outlier when it comes to the fact that I disliked the first book I feel like that was an unpopular opinion but if you are the same as me and you disliked the first book I would say give this one a go because it is a lot better I think so I'm gonna crack on with this I'll probably check in with you later I'm hoping to finish it today if not by the latest tomorrow so I will check in with you when I have finished this I feel like every vlog clip I have done in the last like two weeks has been in the dark because it gets dark at like 4 p.m and <laughs> I feel like every single one I've had to sit in front of a bloody lamp to be able to even have my face on show. Anyway, I need to update you. I have finished Things We Tired From The Light by Lucy Score. I liked this. I actually liked this. Which if you haven't seen my thoughts and feelings towards Things We Never Got Over, then you might be confused as to why I am so like baffled by that. 
I hated Things We Never Got Over. I despised it. I thought it was bad. I thought it was really bad. <laughs> Which I don't really like to shuttle books because everyone can like whatever they like. We've had this discussion, but I didn't like that book. That is probably one of my least favorite books I think to ever exist. I'm gonna, I'm just gonna say it. I think it's one of my most hated books that I've ever read. And so I already owned this book by the time that I read the first book. And so I was already in deep. I already owned it. I kind of, you know, it was on my TBR, and I was like. I kind of have to pick it up at some point. Had I not picked it up prior to reading the first book, I would never have bought this book. And I'm kind of glad that I did. I'm gonna give this a 3.75. A 3.75, who would have thought? I genuinely enjoyed my time reading this, I did. I think it was fun, it was far too long. That's my one thing about Lucy Score. I say that and I've only read literally two, these two books by her, but they are long. This was like almost 600 pages, which for a romance, I think is too much. If I'm gonna be honest, I think it's too much. I like a little 300 page romance. I think that that's perfect. This was too long. There was a lot going on. So part of me kind of understands it, but also it was, I got to a point where I was like, okay, there's still 150 pages left and I, I'm bored. <laughs> but I still gave this 3.75. I think I went over the plot in the last clip that I did. So I'm not gonna rehash it too much, but I just think it was really fun. I really liked the tension. It's definitely not like a slow burn, but in terms of, I guess, actual spice or kissing, anything like that is like, a good 70, maybe 60, 70% of the way into this book. So it's not like off the bat, but there's definitely tension off of the bat. I really like these two together. It is dual POV, which I always appreciate. And I think one of the main reasons I hated the first book so much was because of the characters themselves. I really didn't like Knox. I found him completely obnoxious, annoying, not for me. And I really liked Nash. I thought he was really cute. I thought that Lena was really sweet. I liked their story. I think it was, I don't know how to explain this, but it was almost insta-love, but also not. Like I said, it was kind of not slow burn, but it was, you know, 70% mark before things were happening. So I can't really say it's insta-love, but as soon as things started happening, it was like that. Do you know what I mean? I hope that makes sense. Um, and I'm not really a fan of like insta lovey stuff. It wasn't too bad. It really wasn't that bad. But I much preferred the writing in this one. I don't know what has changed. I don't know whether it's just because she's further into writing her books, but she's also written a hell of a lot of books. So maybe it's not that. I think it's because I just preferred these characters so much more. And I think it was just a bit more of a fun story. You've still got that like underlying crime situation that I'm not gonna get into because it's long and I don't wanna spoil anything. But there is like an underlying crime situation going on and it's all a bit dramatic it is very very dramatic but it kind of works like it's kind of like oh here we go again but also it's kind of entertaining so i can't really complain i liked this i'm glad that i have read it i would now consider reading the third book in this series but i am conflicted because people that loved the rest of the series did not like the third book in this series so then i'm like am i also gonna hate that one if people that loved the first two don't like the last one Am I gonna hate the last one? Do you know what I mean? <laughs> so if any of you guys have read the third one and enjoyed it or have any thoughts and feelings, please let me know. I did see Sarah and Des read it because they were really excited for it and both of them were relatively disappointed by it. So I don't know. I don't know. I don't own the third book, so it's not tipped off my TBR by any means, but just for future reference, I'm unsure if I'll pick it up. But I am pleasantly surprised with this one and I'm very glad that the scavenger hunt picked it out because otherwise I have a feeling I would have put it off for a very long time purely based off of my feelings for the first book. So I think we can call this a success overall. I think this was successful. I had a great time doing the scavenger hunt. I've enjoyed the book. Can we really complain? I feel like I can't. I am very glad that I got to this and I read it in literally two days, not even that. A space of 24 hours, I finished this book. I think that speaks for itself. I did like this. It wasn't the best thing ever, but it was fun. It was easy. It's not lighthearted. I was gonna say lighthearted. It's definitely not lighthearted. There's a lot of like discussion of depression, anxiety, panic attacks. The whole crime situation is a bit intense, but it was fun. It was fun. It was fun. I'm very glad that I've read this. So that is it for this video. I hope you have enjoyed. I love doing these scavenger hunts and you guys seem to enjoy watching them. So I will happily do another one if you guys would like. But yeah, thank you very much for watching. Thank you for being here and I will see you whenever I next see you.